they should all speak Thai. Yeah. <laughs> Oddly, they are. There are hundreds yeah. of Vietnamese studying Thai, but how no, 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 no. many I, Thai study Vietnamese? I, I was only joking. But I, I actually, <laughs> personally, I, 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 I hope in many ways that that never really happens. Um, I think re language diversity is a, is a reflection of, a, of, of cultural diversity very much. And um, uh, I think we can all try to communicate in a common language and, and that might as well be, be English, I hope. Um, in the meantime, you know, retain our, our own identities and, and, and languages is, is probably what will continue to make this region uh, an interesting one. Thanks. Uh, Leka. Uh, Leka Shankar, freelance journalist from India. Uh, this is with reference to your comment about giving a fillip to the tourism industry and the extra initiatives and investments that you want to do. Uh, I was referring pr particularly to the Indian market, which yeah. I hear from the TAT is the only market that remained totally unaffected by the riots. In the last three years, the numbers doubled. But the 500,000 from India is still a very small number compared to the huge numbers that haven't visited Thailand. So I was uh, wondering, apart from all the business investments and all that the FDA brings, are you thinking any, uh, of any schemes and investments from the tourism point of view to get the big markets, the film units and all that, which Thailand is trying to promote a lot? Uh, I have a second question, if, if I can ask right now before I forget, it's, it's film related. Uh, you spoke about education and agriculture, and I was just thinking of a culture question. Uh, you spoke about all the micro-level agricultural schemes that you have, and I don't know whether you're aware of this beautiful film called Agrarian Utopia on rice farming that created waves all over the world and really brought uh, the Thailand rice farmers into the picture. And there's another film which won the top award at the Cannes Festival, Uncle Boon Me, this year. Uh, I wondered whether films like this would bring about a change of vision in the Thai government towards financing the small independent film, because all these films, the money has not come from within, it's come from outside, but it's really pushed Thailand into the uh, cinematic uh, limelight. And I think it's about time uh, the government and, you know, did something to help these filmmakers. Okay. Um, right. <laughs> I, I, on the on the film thing, uh, I think one of the problems that we, we, we faced this past year in particular was uh, was um, uh, unfair distribution of the funds that we did have. Let's put it that way, and uh, nobody is particularly happy about it. And uh, I, I, I take what you said. I haven't seen that film, by the way. Uh, I'm told it's difficult to watch, uh, but is it? I'll I'll I'll, I'll take a look. And uh, regards to India, yes, uh, big market um, for big potential for us. Um, I, I've always said that Thailand is, is uniquely positioned, in my opinion, um, in that our culture is a blend of the uh, Indian subcontinent culture and the Chinese culture, in a way that uh, there's almost no other country in the world in which the Indian and the Chinese visitor can, can feel comfortable in. Uh, equally comfortable uh, in that particular country, and um, we must, you know, utilize that that uniqueness. Uh, I agree. Please, uh, Willie. Hmm? Willie Garmon, Berliner Zeitung. Uh, you said earlier that you need to change the perception of your government of what it is doing in the terms of economic policies in the country. I wonder, you know, the massive censorship that you are practicing. Do you think it's going to help you in this effort? Uh, <laughs> actually, the, the, the censorship wasn't intended to help uh, change perception of uh, our economic commitment uh, towards helping the rural poor. Um, I know censorship is, uh, is a sensitive matter. Um, when, for example, uh, an, uh, I think uh, an independent maker of a particular ad uh, found that that particular ad was, was censored, um, there was a, a lot of false perception that that was the government's doing, but in fact the government isn't involved in censorship uh, of that nature. Uh, and in fact, it was the government channel um, that first put that ad uh, on air as a symbol of the fact that the government fully 
uh, supports the merits of that particular uh, reconciliation um, advertisement. We have, of course, uh, put a ban on the uh, red TV, um, but there it really has less to do uh, with an attempt to um, to to sense a message, as opposed to our our sense of the need uh, to ensure that there's no uh, communication of what was clearly hate speech um, across any kind of media. And um, you know, beyond that, I don't think we're interested in 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 censoring anybody really. You don't think you are going. You don't think you are going out of bounds. I mean, CRES is even blocking WikiLeaks here in Thailand. Blocking what? WikiLeaks. Your the CRES is even blocking WikiLeaks. So you don't think you are going out of bounds with your controlling I, I of websites? I better not answer that simply because I, I I don't even know that they're doing that. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Uh, Tim Johnston for the Financial Times. Uh, you were talking about South Korea, and then you were talking about golf courses, and you were talking, you said ownership shouldn't be a problem. Are you thinking about lifting the limits on foreign ownership of land? And just on a broader thing, you've been talking about exports. You were saying that, you know, the, the economy is dep dependent on the growth of your neighbors, your export buying countries. You said perhaps an export driven economy isn't distributing goods to the populace as well as it should. How do you spark Thai investment? I know people are buying motorbikes, but they're mostly imported. Investments have been very low for a decade now. Mm. Um, how do you start that? And how do you rebalance the economy? Um, OK, first question, Tim, regarding land ownership. Um, that's probably the most sensitive issue of, of all, not just in Thailand, but in many other countries. Um, the issue of extending the lease is something that probably is more practical um, and you know I wouldn't necessarily be against that many of my colleagues wouldn't necessarily be against that on the issue of uh, stimulating domestic investment actually uh, domestic investment has uh, picked up quite significantly and and somewhat surprisingly uh, over the past uh, several months. Um, but looking in the long term, uh, I think there is a need for the government still to, to take the lead. I, I, I never want my, 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 own, um, my own instinct is that uh, the government uh, shouldn't, shouldn't be doing too much. Um, but I think in terms of some simple basic uh, infrastructure, uh, that will provide uh, a start and, and in, uh, in, in terms of increasing level of competitiveness and efficiency to the system as a whole. Um, that is probably necessary in order to uh, stimulate higher levels of uh, private sector investment. Also, uh, liberalization from a regulatory perspective. Many of the constraints um, on private sector investment has been government regulation and the, the, the sense on the part of the government that uh, every sector and every industry needs to be controlled. Um, I think this needs to be dismantled. Uh, we're trying to do exactly that, for example, in the telecommunication space, uh, which we believe, if successful, will lead to uh, significant investment um, in a very key sector uh, in such a way that we'll be able to catch up with uh, the rest of the world within five years. Um, and you know we really want to do that across the board um, with, with, with all sectors. So deregulation is key. Thanks. We have time for a, a few more questions. So if you're itching to ask something, a uh, uh, good time to get in line. Uh, Hasina? Yeah, hi. Good evening, Minister Korn. Uh, three quick questions. You mentioned that you're less and less concerned about foreign ownership. So what's next on the TICOM uh, issue? And my second question is on the rail project that you, you, you discussed. It's a very exciting uh, project that you have planned. It's also a very big ticket item. How confident are you that you actually have the mandate of the people to go through with these big ticket projects and that it will not be derailed uh, by the opposition in the future? 
and that they will honor these contracts and it won't cause complications for the government. And my last question is with regards to possible dissolution of the Democrat Party, mm. if you could take us through some scenarios in the future and what's going to happen to the executive leadership. Thank you very much. Okay. I knew you wouldn't be able to resist the <laughs> derailing, but um, uh, I, I think I can safely say that uh, the, the rail projects in particular um, is one that uh, no political party would disagree with. Um, it's an uncontroversial route. It goes from the northeast to the south. Um, and, uh, <laughs> uh, and the Rayong route also is one that, that makes sense. Um, every economic planner has talked about that being the most appropriate uh, top priority when it comes to uh, high speed high speed trains. Um, so once we uh, have the structure in place, uh, I, I don't believe that even a change in government would, would lead to uh, a, a change in direction. Um, so I'm confi quite confident of, of, of the support and the mandate uh, on, on that particular, on that particular um, project. Um, with regards to the party, uh, it, it is complicated. There are two, uh, the two charges that being leveled against the Democrat Party. Um, both of them are events that occurred actually before I joined the party, um, right on the cusp of it. I, I ran for office in February uh, 2005, and um, uh, these events occurred in 2004. Uh, and some of the accounts were, were then uh, signed uh, in the year 2005. Um, so in all reasonableness, uh, even if there was anything done that was, that was uh, wrong or illegal, um, it was done by the uh, uh, executive committee um, that was in place prior to the prime minister becoming party leader. Um, of course, the executive committee prior to the prime minister becoming leader had the prime minister as the, ex the, the, the uh, deputy leader. 